I record this. And so where are we Wednesday? We're going to go ahead and write down these three fractions or numbers, this combination that I have on my slide for warm up today. And our slide instructed you to build a number line. So right underneath this piece of information, I'm just going to build a number line just like that. So your number line should kind of look like my number line. And we're going to go ahead and call this zero for now. And we're going to partition this off into some equal pieces. So I'm going to call this number one. I'm going to call this number two. And I'm going to call this number three. So there are my three whole numbers. So today's Where Are We Wednesday, you were given these three numbers and we need to find where their location is on the number line. So if you could get me started, how or do you know what I should probably do to this number line first? Should I leave it in only whole numbers, or do I maybe need to partition it off into some pieces? What do you think I ought to do, Aries? Probably like turn the improper fraction to mix mixed numbers. Okay, maybe I might want to turn these improper fractions to mixed numbers, but we also know that mixed numbers can be turned into improper fractions. But that doesn't really help me with my number line. Do you think I need to do anything to my number line, Preston? You probably want to break the pieces in half because it's... Why would you choose half? Because um, the denominator is two. And so, we're going to cut our whole pieces into two equal pieces. And I'm so glad you said that because our denominator represents the number of equal pieces in a whole. And if I know that I have a denominator of 2, Zara, then I know that I need to cut between 0 and the whole number 1, I need to cut this into two equal pieces, which means that all of my pieces between my whole numbers need to be cut in half. Now that I've cut that in half, could I go ahead and do some labeling now? So when I see a hash mark between the number 0 and 1, what would I want to label that hash mark as, Ethan? Not 0.5. Oh, well, you could, I guess you could use decimals. But if I wanted to turn that decimal into a fraction, what is equivalent to 0.5? One half. One half. So I'm going to go ahead and call it one half. I, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put 0.5 here because you were not wrong when you said that. I just was hoping that you give me a fraction name. But decimals and fractions are equivalent. All right. I'm going to go ahead and label this piece right here one half two. All right, so then I come across the number one. What is another name for the number one? I mean, we did a lot of this yesterday. What is it, Preston? Two halves. Oh, two halves. And that makes total sense because two divided by two is what number? One. One. Math should make sense, and it does, right? Okay, let's look at the next hash mark. What would I label this? We have two options here. We have something we could label it on the bottom and maybe something we could do on the top. What could be that amount max? Three halves. We could call it three halves. And yesterday when we were talking about three halves, I said, hey, you're never going to want to tell somebody I have three halves of something. There's a better name. And what is that better name, Preston? One whole one half. One and one half. Oh. 
We're going on up to the next number. The whole number is 2. Is there another fraction name for that? What could be that fraction name, Tess? Four, four, half. four halves. So 4 is my numerator. 2 is my denominator. And guess what? What is 4 divided by 2 going to give you? 2. 2. And that happens to be the whole number that's there. Okay. So I keep moving on. What would be my next number, Mena? What would be the next number that I could write here? Look and see if you notice any patterns or any trends. What could we put there, Jovi? What could be a number that we put here? Do you notice any patterns? Do you notice any trends? What could be that next number? She says two and one half. So I'll go back to Minna and I'll ask, if this is two and one half, what could we call this on top? You're exactly right, five halves. We started with one, we went to two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves. So what do you think we would call three? Six. Addison? Um, six, halves. six halves. Hey, guess what? What is six divided by two going to give you? Three. Oh my gosh. Isn't that funny how that works out? Hmm. And what could I call this next mark? Owen, what would I call this next mark? Seven halves. She, he says seven halves. So what would be an equivalent to seven halves, Holly? Three and one half. Oh, I'm so glad we put this number line in our journal. And here's why. Because you're going to have a number line in the future. And do you see some patterns happening in our number line? Yes. Do you see that when we have improper fractions, which is what we have listed on the top, we have our improper fraction form that we're just simply going in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven with our numerator name. But does the denominator name change? No. No. Because we're not changing how many equal pieces are in the whole. And the bottom is And the bottom is represented by that mixed number. Or mixed fraction. Or fraction. Whatever you want to call it. I call it mixed number. Sometimes I accidentally call it fraction. But I actually think it doesn't matter because it is a mixture of whole numbers and fractions together. So that leads us to our next piece. We're going to put some notes in here. Yesterday, I'm going to skip about two lines because I'm going to want to use all my paper. Mixed number. And I'm still recording this because I want people to put this in their notes if they're not with us today. Or maybe if they missed or I write too fast and they th are thinking later that they need to go back and listen to these notes. What is a mixed number? Well, a mixed number is a mixture. That's what I would call it. A mixture of whole numbers and fraction pieces. So yesterday, I'm trying to remember where we left off in this classroom, we did not get to talk about this side of our paper, but we will get to that side in a minute. So one thing that I want you to do with me right now is I want us to put this example in our notes. 
I love examples because if I forget how to do something, then I like to go back and look and see, hey, is there an example that I can look at? So this example that we're going to put in our notes first is the example one and one half. That happens to be the first number that we're doing here on our paper. And so if I'm thinking about the, the mixed number one and one half, I know another name for the whole number to be what, Preston? We want it to be, let's start here. What is one name for the number one? A whole. So we could write that as 2 over 2. We cannot throw the halves away, so we're going to combine it to get an improper name. And what is that improper name? If we have 2 halves plus a half, what is that improper name going to give me? B. Um, Jenna. 3 halves. I'm not going to make you rewrite that on this paper, but I am going to ask that you go ahead and write that information down. For now. We might as well look at both of these at one time. The next one that I want you to put in your notes is the fraction 3 and 4 fifths. 3 and 4 fifths. So if I wanted to rename my whole number 3, what could be another name for the three? Jake. 15 well, I want to break it down. And I want to, you're right with the 15 fifths. But I want to break down each whole. What is each whole going to be? No, not here. Isn't it going to be five fifths? So we're going to write five fifths plus. 5 fifths plus 5 fifths. That takes care of my 3. There's my number 1. There's my number 1. There's my number 1, right? I have 4 fifths left. I can't just throw it away. I have to combine it. So what is another name for 3 and 4 fifths? Well, we could say 5 10, 15 plus 4 more makes 19 fifths. Makes 19 fifths. And now, not only do we have an example in our journal, but we also have the answer to number 2. So I'm going to record that. 19 fifths. Let's look at our next fraction. Our next fraction on our paper is the fraction 3 and 7 eighths. I notice that my denominator has changed. It is now an 8. How would I represent a whole for the number 3? And how many times would I write it? Who could help me out with this problem? Ethan. Well, what's going to get equal just one whole? Eight eighths. And I need it not once, not twice, but I need it three times to represent the three. There's one. There's two. There's three. Now, what am I going to do with the seven eighths? Am I going to throw it away, Josie? Or am I going to put it with the amount? What are we going to do with the 7 eighths? Are we going to add it to the end? Or are we just going to act like it's not there? We're going to add it to the end. And now I can simply count by 8. 8, 16, 24 plus 7 more gives me what total, Mena? 31. 31. So that's going to be called 31 eighths. I'm going to go ahead and write that down on my paper. 31 eighths. 
now I don't have to go back and answer that one separately. We have one more we can put in our journal. And that one more looks like this. One and two thirds. One and two thirds. What would be another name for the whole number one, Ava? What could be another name for the whole number one? Um, I say. Look at your denominator. You could say three, um, three thirds. Three thirds. We could say three thirds. There's my whole number, number one. And Holly, what about the two thirds? Are we going to throw it away or put it with it? We're going to put it with the number. So right now, if I have three and I add two more, I have the new fraction name <coughs> called five thirds. What questions can I answer for you about that piece? Go back to your answer document and put that on your answer document. <coughs> All right, very quickly before I have you finish that paper, you're going to need to add this term. This term is called improper fraction. Improper. Well, an improper fraction is when you have a larger numerator than denominator. Which is what we have here. This is an improper fraction, 3 halves. 19 fifths, that is an improper fraction. 31 over 8 is an improper fraction. And 5 over 3 is an improper fraction. And yesterday, when we were working together, we said, hey, we can use division to help us find the answer. Or we could use those dots. So I'm going to model both of those in my notes right now. So I'm going to use this one right here, 5 thirds. What that really means is that I have 5 dots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And 3, which is my denominator, tells me how many equal or how many are in a group. There's 3 in a group. So now, if I were to divide that, because that really means 5 divided by 3, when we build a little house like we practiced yesterday, we said 5 divided by 3. How many groups of three will give me that number five? One. You already have the picture, right? One will go on top of the number five. When you put that number one, you're separating. So we have one group of three, and whenever we separate things, over there on my wall, it says separating means subtract. We're separating that group of three from all of the five. Well, how many are left without a group? Two. Two. And yesterday we discussed that that remainder can be turned into a fraction called two-thirds. Two is your numerator. Three is your denominator. And that happens to be the same number that we started with here. Okay, 